Okay, uh, and taking a look at number one here, we have a system of three equations and three unknowns, okay? And so to handle this, what we need to do is take one equation, and in this case I chose to use the second one, negative x plus 2y plus 2z equals 3, and pair that with the first equation, and then over here I use that second equation again, and I paired it with the third equation, okay? So it's up to you. You choose one of the equations and pair it with the other two equations, okay? Now, after you do that first step, the second step is you want to eliminate the same variable in both of those two pairs of equations, okay? So, uh, if I look ahead over here, negative x and x, it's going to be really easy to just add these straight down and eliminate x in this, okay? So, why don't I go ahead and do that real fast. If I just add straight down, I will eliminate the x. 2y plus y is 3y plus 2z plus 2z is 4z, and 3 plus 4 is 7, okay? So keep in mind, I just eliminated x in these two over here, so I need to do the same thing over here. So I want to do, uh, I want to add these equations in such a way to eliminate the x variable, okay? And uh, I see I have a positive 2x and a negative x, so that's not quite going to work. But if I multiply this second equation by a 2, that will produce a negative 2x right there, and that would be perfect to, to get this to work out, okay? So what I want you guys to do is let's multiply this through by 2. So that will give me a negative 2x, a positive 4y, a positive 4z, and a positive 6, okay? Now let's add this equation together with this equation, and then notice here the x drops out. 3y plus 4y is 7y, z plus 4z is 4 5z, and 6 plus 6 is 12, okay? So what I've done in my first step is I've went from three equations and three unknowns, and now I've produced two equations and two unknowns, okay? So this is stuff that we've done before, and now I can just solve this system. It'll allow me to solve for y and then solve for z, and then once I have both y and z, I can go back into one of these original equations to get what the x variable must be, okay? So your next step is to pair these two equations together. So let's put them next to each other. 7y plus 5z equals 12. Okay, great. Now, in looking at this, I want to add and eliminate. Um, we don't really have the best numbers to use here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the 4 and the 5. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by 5 and this bottom equation by negative 4, okay? And my whole reason for doing that is 5 times 4 will give me 20z, and negative 4 times 5 will give me negative 20z, and then when I add straight down, they should go away, okay? So uh, let, me, uh, let me just work these out, and I'll put them right underneath. So 15y plus 20z equals 35. That's that top equation. And then this bottom equation will be negative 28y minus 20z equals negative 48. Okay, great. Now I'm able to add straight down, and notice the positive 20z and the negative 20z will drop out. So here, let's see, I'm going to get a negative 13y equals 35, and negative 48 gives me negative 13. Okay, great, that works out wonderful. So now I'll divide both sides by 13, negative 13, and I will get y is equal to 1. Okay, once I've done that, once I have y equals 1, I'll go back in one of these equations here and I'll plug in y equals 1 and that will allow me to get what z has to be. So uh, you can go back in before I multiply both sides by 5. Let's just look at this guy I have in parentheses here and I'm going to replace y equals 1. Okay, so I have 3 times y, which is 3 times 1, plus 4 times z is equal to 7. Okay, 3 times 1 is 1. Uh, plus 4z equals 7. I'll subtract 3 from both sides, and you get 4z equals 4. And then again, again here, if I divide both sides by 4, z is going to equal to 1. Okay, so I've solved two of them. I have y equals 1 and z equals 1, and now I need to figure out what x is, okay? So you can go back to any of these first original equations, plug in y is 1 and z equals 1, and then determine what x is. Okay, so I'll just go back to the very first one. 2 times x, I still don't know x. 3 times y is 1, so plus 3, plus z is also 1, is equal to 6. And this little equation is going to allow me to solve for x. So 2x plus 4 equals 6.
subtract 4 from both sides, and you get 2x is equal to 2. And wow, in this case, it looks like all of them are 1. So dividing by 2, I also get that x is equal to 1. Okay? So here's my ordered uh, solution. It's a triplet. My x value is 1. My y value is 1. And also my z value is 1. So that is your answer for the first system of three equations and three unknowns. And we figured out the unknowns. x is 1, y is 1, and z is 1. Okay. Okay, on number two, what I chose to do is I took the equation x minus y plus 3z equals 2, and I paired that equation with the other two equations to try to solve, like we did in the first example, the uh, system of three equations and three unknowns. Okay? Now, uh, in putting these two together, it's going to be really easy to eliminate y. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. I'm going to add straight down, and negative y plus y will drop out the y's, okay? So let's do that real fast. I'm going to put a plus sign here, draw a line x and 2x is 3x. Negative y plus y drops out. 3z plus 4z is 7z, and 2 plus 3 is 5, okay? So I have to keep in mind what I just did. I eliminated y in this set of two equations, so I need to similarly eliminate y in these two. Uh, to do that, it won't be too bad. I'll have to multiply this equation by 2 to create a negative 2y, and then when I add it to this positive 2y, we will be able to eliminate that y, okay? So let me see if I, if I multiply this top equation by 2, maybe I can just kind of sneak it in here. 2x, 2y, 3z will become 6z, and 2 times 2 will become 4. So I was just a little sneaky there. I multiply that top equation by 2, okay? Now I'm going to add straight down. 2x plus x is 3x. Negative 2y plus 2y drops out. We have 6z plus z, which is 7z. And I have 4 plus 5 equals 9. Okay, great. Now I have an equation with um, x and z and another equation with x and z. So I'm going to pair those two together. And what you'll notice when you pair these two together, um, when I try to eliminate, if I multiply 3 by negative 1 here, this will get a negative 3, a negative 7, and a negative 5. But what you'll notice is 3x plus negative 3x, that zeroes out your x's, but also 7z, negative 7z, or zeroes out your y's. So this whole side, when I added these two together, comes out to 0. And uh, over here we have 9 and 5, which is, whoops, negative, I'm sorry, positive 4. So I've created a little bit of an issue here because I have 0 on this side is equal to positive 4 on this side, and that is an untrue statement, okay? So these uh, two lines um, are parallel and they never intersect, okay? So because we have a problem here where I'm not getting an equation for x or y and we have a false statement 0 equals 4, which is not true, this is going to be the case where we have no solution. So if you take a look at these planes, um, they don't intersect at a common point for all three for all three planes. Okay, so number the answer to number two is no solution. Okay, if I look a little bit ahead on number three, I notice the third equation says two y plus z equals ten, and it doesn't have an x in it at all. So let me just put that on the board for a second. Two y plus z equals ten. So I could save myself a little bit of time and energy if I pair the other two equations together in such a way to eliminate x, okay? Because this equation already has x gone, all right? And if you look at this equation, it's really nice because the first equation and the second equation are perfectly set up to get rid of, of x anyway. So if I write the first equation down, x plus 2y minus z equals 1, together with the next equation, negative x plus y, minus 2z equals 5. Well, these are perfectly set up to get rid of x, okay? So I can save myself a little bit of time. I'm going to eliminate x in these equations here. So if I add, I'll get 3y minus 3z equals 6, okay? So I have an equation with just y and z. This one already is just in y and z. So now I can pair these two together and solve that uh, system of two equations, all right? So if I put these guys together, 3y minus 3z equals 6. Now I just need to solve in such a way to um, get these to, to work. All right? Um, 
Well, it looks simple to me. I'll just multiply through by 3 here, and that will provide a positive 3 and a negative 3, and those will cancel out, okay? So I'm going to multiply this top equation by 3, and let me just put it right underneath here since I'm going to eliminate right there anyway. So 3 times 2 is 6y, 3 times 3z is positive 3z, and 3 times 10 is 30, okay? So now I'm going to add these two together. The three z's are going to drop out, and I have 9y equals, and 6 and 30 is 36, okay? And that's going to allow me to solve for y. If I divide both sides by 9, 9 divided by 9 is 1, and 36 divided by 9 is 4. So I get y equals to 4. Great. Once I have y equals to 4, I can come back into any of these equations with just y and z, and I will be able to solve for z by plugging in y equals 4, okay? So I'm going to go back to this first equation up here before I multiplied it by 3, and I'm going to have 2y plus z equals 10, but I'm plugging in y equals 4. So 2 times y is 8 plus z equals to 10, okay? Now to solve that equation, I'll subtract both sides by 8, and clearly, z will have to be 2 for that to work out. So I'm 2 thirds of my way done. I have y equals 4 and z equals 2. Then I can come back to either one of these equations, my original equations, and uh, I will be able to figure out what x is because I'll plug in y and I'll plug in z. Okay? So if I take this first equation, I have x plus 2 times y. y is 4, so x plus 8, minus z, and z is 2, so minus 2 equals 1. So x plus 6 equals 1. Subtract 6 from both sides. You get x equals to negative 5. Okay? So now putting this as a solution, it's an ordered triplet. My x value is negative 5. My y value is 4. And my z value is 2. Okay? And that's it. That'll be the answer for this problem. Okay, if you guys take a look at number four, you'll notice very similar to the last equation, or the last problem we worked, you have one equation that doesn't have one of the variables, okay? So I put that guy aside, it's missing an x, so I'm gonna solve these two together in such a way to eliminate x, okay? So I'll save myself a little bit of time. Once I can figure that out, I'll have two equations without x, and then I will solve that system, okay? So my goal here is I want to eliminate x with what's happening over here. So to be able to do that, uh, I can simply multiply this top equation by 2, and that will create a positive 6, and then I'll have to multiply this bottom equation by 3, and that will create a negative 6, okay? And then when I have a positive 6x and a negative 6x, and I add straight down, those will go away. All right? So without getting too messy here, let me go ahead and multiply this equation by 2, put it here, and multiply this equation by 3, and put it there. So 2 times 3 is 6x minus 4y plus 12z equals negative 34. And here I'm multiplying by 3, so I get negative 6x minus 3y plus 15 equals 60. Okay, I did all of that just so I could put a big plus sign here, add straight down, and the x's should drop out. Okay, 6x and negative 6x goes to 0. Negative 4y and negative 3y is negative 7y. I have a positive 12z and a positive 15. That's going to give me 27z. And a negative 34 and a positive 60. So that's going to give me 26. All right. Then I have something with y and z. And up here I have y and z. So I'm going to put those together, okay? So let me just double check. All right, let's put this over here, negative 7y plus 27z equals 26. Okay, these numbers are not kind at all. Um, I want to try to eliminate one, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to concentrate on eliminating y because that 27 is really scaring me right now. So I'm going to multiply this guy here um, by 7, and I'm going to multiply this guy here by 4. 
and that will create a positive 28 and a negative 28, and then I will be able to eliminate the y's, okay? So let me just put that through here. So 7 times 4 is 28y plus 49z equals 210. Here I'm multiplying through by 4, you get negative 28y. Let's see, 4 times 27 is 108. 108z and 4 times 26 is 104. All right, put a big plus sign here. I'm gonna add straight down. That and that we know is zero, and we have 108 plus 49, which is 157z. And 210 plus 104 is 314. Wow, we really lucked out there. If I divide both sides by 157, z is going to come out to 2, okay? Thank goodness, because that was looking pretty bad for a second. So we have z equals 2, okay? Now again, once I know that z is equal to 2, I go back into one of these equations with just y and z. I let z equal 2, and I figure out what y is, okay? So I'm going to take this guy here. Before I multiplied it by 7, I have 4 times y plus 7 times z is 2, we know that, so 14 equals 30, okay? Subtracting 14 from both sides, we get 4y equals subtract 14, 16, and then dividing both sides by 4, we'll get y equals 4. So I have z equals 2 and y equals 4. Now that I know those, I'll go back to any of these first equations, plug in those, and I'll get what x is, okay? So let me just, it doesn't matter, I'll just take this first equation before I multiplied it through by 2. So I have 3 times x minus 2 times y, y is 4, so minus 8, plus 6 times z, z is 2, so 12, equals negative 17, okay? So I just have this last equation to solve for and I'll get x by itself. So 3x minus 8 plus 12 is plus 4 equals negative 17. I'll subtract 4 from both sides. 3x equals negative 21, and x equals negative 7. Okay, great. So I have my ordered triplets. x is negative 7, y is 4, and z is 2. These problems, these system of equations with three unknowns, take a lot of times, uh, but just be very systematic in our approach, and we should be able to get the answer. Okay, so Negative 7, comma 4, comma 2 for that one. All right, guys, on number 5, we're asked to find the determinants. And when you do that, the first thing that you want to do, well, after you write down the three columns, is you want to write down the first column and second column again. Okay, so 1, 5, 0, we're going to put it right here. 1, 5, 0. And then negative 2, 1, 2, put it right here. Negative 2, 1, 2. Okay? Then you're going to make three diagonals starting from left and going down right. So our first diagonal starting in here is 1, 1, negative 1. The next one's negative 2, 1, 0. And the next one's 3, 5, 2. Okay? Now the way the determinant uh, rule works is you're going to multiply the numbers that you have in the diagonal and they're going to add those up. Okay? So 1 times 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. Plus this times this times 0. Well, anything times 0 is 0, so that's plus 0. Plus 3 times 5 times 2. 15 times 2 is 30. Okay? So you have three diagonals from left to right. You multiply what's in the diagonal, and then you add those numbers up. Then you're going to go three diagonals this way. And then you're going to subtract those. Okay? So again, 0 times anything is 0, so I'm going to subtract 0. 2 times 1 times 1 is positive 2, so I'm going to subtract 2. 5 and negative 2 and negative 1, well, that's going to be positive 10, but I'm subtracting, so subtract 10. Okay? Then you just add these numbers up, and you'll get your determinant. So I have negative 1 plus 0 plus 30, which is 29, minus 0, minus 2. 29 minus 2 is 27, and then minus another 10. 27 minus 10 is 17. So my determinant for this problem, number 5, comes out to 17. Okay, now number 6, we're asked to find the area of a triangle with the vertices negative 1, 2, 5, 6, and 2, negative 3. Okay, 
So we have a nice little determinant formula to do that. And the formula is you take one half times the determinant of, and the formula works like this. You put your x values first. So I have my x values of negative 1, positive 5, and positive 2. And then my y values next. So my y values are positive 2. You got to keep it in the same order, 6 and negative 3. Okay, so you have your x values, negative 1, 5, and 2, and then the y values, 2, 6, and negative 3, and then you put 1, 1, 1. Okay? So I need to find the determinant of this guy. And the way I do that is just like I did the last problem. I'm going to write down the first column again, negative 1, 2, 1, and the second column again, 5, 6, 1. Okay? So this guy, this guy, and this guy. So negative 1 times 6 times 1 is negative 6, plus, that will give me negative 15, plus 2 times 2 times 1 is 4. Now I'm going to subtract these diagonals, this one, this one, and this one. So 1 times 6 times 2 is, I'm subtracting 12. 1 times 3 times negative 1, I'm going to subtract 3. 2 times 5 and 1 is 10, so I'm subtracting 10. Okay? So I want to add up and subtract these numbers. I'm just going to cheat and use my calculator real fast. So negative 6 minus 15 plus 4 minus 12 minus 3 minus 10 comes out to negative 42. All right, so it's 1 half of negative 42 which is negative 21, okay? And then the last thing that I forgot to write in my formula is it's the absolute value of all of this. So the absolute value of negative 21 is positive 21, okay? So you put in your vertices, your x values, then your y values, then 1, 1, 1. Calculate the determinant of that, take 1 half of the determinant, and then it's the absolute value. So your answer should be 21. Okay, number seven here. Um, we have a lot of things to do. Uh, the first thing that I would, well, we have a power to a power. So anytime you have a power to a power, you multiply the exponents. So if I multiply k to the negative one half times two, well, this is two over one. And if you multiply, you go straight across. So that's gonna be k to the negative two divided by two or k to the negative one, okay? Uh, then, so this whole thing here simplifies to just k to the negative one. Then if you look at, we have a negative exponent, a negative exponent, and a negative exponent. So all of the negative exponents I'm going to move, okay? If they're in the numerator, you move them down. If they're in the denominator, you move them up. And I'll leave the positive exponents alone. So I have 2 to the 1 half, stays there. This guy is going to come down to the denominator. Uh, k to the 3 fourths stays up there. 2 to the negative 1 half is going to come up and be 2 to the positive 1 half k to the negative 1 is going to come up and be k to the positive 1, and k to the negative 1 half is going to come down and be k to the 1 half, okay? So all the negative exponents I moved, and then once you've moved them, they become um, positive. Okay, now my rule is when I have exponents and I'm multiplying, I add the exponents, okay? Well, luckily for us, 2 to the 1 half times 2 to the 1 half we can add 1 half and 1 half, and that adds up to 1. Okay, so that works out pretty well. So 2 to the 1 half times 2 to the 1 half. You keep your 2. You add the exponents. 1 half plus 1 half is 1. So that's 2 to the 1 or 2. These guys, we have an exponent with a denominator of 4, and here 1 over 1 and 1 over 2. So because I have to work with those k's and get them simplified, I'm going to choose to put all of these k's with a denominator of 4, okay? So I can add and subtract as I needed. So 3 fourths is already in over 4. 1 over 1, I'm going to write as 4 over 4. 1 half, I'm going to convert that to 2 over 4, okay? Once I do that, now it's going to be easier for me. So k to the 3 fourths times k to the 4 fourths. In the numerator, that's going to create k to the, if I add, 7 fourths, okay? And now I have k to the 7 fourths in the top, but k to the 2 fourths in the bottom. So now you subtract 
7 fourths minus 2 fourths is 5 fourths. And because there were more k's on top, the answer is going to be in the top. If there were more k's on the bottom, when you subtract, your answer would be in the bottom. So I have 7 fourths minus 2 fourths, and that's 5 fourths. So k to the 5 fourths. Okay? So my final answer, 2 to the 1 is just 2, so 2k two to the 5 fourths. There you have it. All right, let's take a look at number eight. Um, we have three times the cube root of 54 plus five times the cube root of 16. Well, as is, they don't appear to be like radicals, but we do need to simplify. There are perfect cubes inside of 54, and there are perfect cubes inside of 16, okay? So my first step in this problem is to simplify by taking out the perfect cubes. So in 54, if you look at that for a second, uh, I can break that down into 27 times two. And 27 is a perfect cube, right? With 16, I can break that down to 8. 8 is a perfect cube. Okay. Now, uh, be really careful here. This is, I'm going to break this down one more time just to be super clear. This is the cube root of 27 times the cube root of 2. Uh, we can break that down using the product rule for radicals. Cube root of 8 times cube root of 2. Okay? Now, the cube root of 27 is something we know. That's just 3. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. So this whole thing is 3. So I have 3 times 3, which is 9, times the cube root of 2. Plus, the cube root of 8 is 2, because 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. So t this guy here is 2. We have 5 times 2, which is 10. And you have cube root of 2. All right, now at this point, you can add. This is like very similar to adding 9x plus 10x. 9x plus 10x is 19x. Well, 9 cube root of 2 plus 10 cube root of 2, there's 19 of them. So 19 cube root of 2. All right, that's how you add like radicals. On number 9 here, we have a big fourth root. Fourth root of 32, a to the fifth, b to the tenth, c to the fifteenth. Okay? The way I'm going to choose to do this is I'm going to break this down uh, into a bunch of factors, and within each factor I want to find out and pull out all the perfect fourth powers. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a huge radical here, and I'm going to go to each piece, each of these four factors, and I'm going to split it up into stuff I know the fourth root of times what's left over. Now within the number 32, we know the fourth root of 16, because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 will give me 16. But that leaves a 2 left over. So I know, I'll put a times here. I know the fourth root of 16, but I don't know the 2, right? So this 2 is left over, because 16 times 2 equals 32. Now luckily with the rest of these are variables, and then with variables it's pretty simple. Whatever a multiple of 4 is inside of this number will give me a perfect 4, okay? So I know the 4th root of a to the 4th, but there's 5 of them, so I have 1a left over. I know b to the 8th, any multiple of 4, so the highest is 8, and that leaves 2b's left over. And with 15, uh, the best we can do is 12, and that leaves 3 left over, okay? Now, once I get to this point, all of this stuff I know the fourth root of. I'll be able to simplify that. This guy is just going to tag along and be left over, okay? So here's my tag along portion. I don't know the fourth root of 2a b squared c cubed. That's just going to tag along, okay? Because when I have the fourth root of something times something, I can split that up into the fourth root of this times the fourth root of that, okay? I'm splitting it up into two fourth roots now. That part's going to leave and not do anything. It can't be simplified. But this fourth root of all this stuff, I can simplify. The fourth root of 16 is 2. The fourth root of a to the fourth is just a. The fourth root of b to the eighth is b squared. And the fourth root of c to the twelfth is c cubed. Okay? One trick when you're doing variables raised to power and you're trying to figure it out, you're just simply dividing this into this. 4 goes into 4 one time. 4 goes into 8 two times and 4 goes into 12 three times, okay? So this is pretty ugly and long, but this is actually my final answer. 
2ab squared c cubed times the fourth root of 2ab squared c cubed. All right, number 10 here, 2 plus 3i times 1 minus i. Well, the way we do this is we FOIL. And anytime we have an i times an i, that produces an i squared, and i squared is equal to negative 1. So we keep that in mind, okay? So here we go, I'm just going to FOIL. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times negative i is minus 2i. 3i times 1 is plus 3i. 3i times negative i is minus 3i squared, okay? And again, Anytime I have an i squared, I'm going to replace that with negative 1, okay? So I have 2 minus 3i, I'm sorry, minus 2i plus 3i is plus i, and here we have a negative 3 times a negative 1, which is positive 3, okay? So 2 plus i plus 3, which is 5 plus i. And that's it, 5 plus i. All right, number 11, we have 3 minus i divided by 2 plus i, okay? Now remember, i stands for the square root of negative 1, so technically I have a square root sitting in the bottom. So what needs to happen here is I'm going to rationalize the denominator. So to rationalize, I need to multiply by, instead of 2 plus i, 2 minus i. Well, of course, in math, you can't just multiply by 2 minus i because uh, it's going to change it, unless we also multiply the top by 2 minus i, because technically that's 1, and you can multiply by 1, and what this is going to do is going to rationalize the denominator for me, okay? Uh, you have two FOIL problems. You need to FOIL the top and FOIL the bottom, so it might even help to put this in parentheses so you can see that I have a lot of FOILing to do. Okay, let's do the top first. 3 times 2 is 6. We have minus 3i. We have minus 2i, and then I have minus i squared. So negative i times negative i is plus, and then i squared is negative 1, so that gives me a negative 1. Okay? And the bottom, 2 times 2 is 4. You're going to get minus 2i plus 2i. So notice the bottom, the middle terms drop out, and that's why um, rationalizing works. Then I have i and i, so I have minus i squared minus a negative 1 is plus 1, okay? All right, that shouldn't be too bad. So I have 6 minus 1, which is 5. Negative 3i and negative 2i is negative 5i. And this is all over 5, okay? So, of course, I can simplify this a little bit. I'm going to factor a 5 out of the top and get 1 minus i divided by 5. And I can reduce those 5s. And so your final answer for this problem is just 1 minus i. Okay, on number 12, we're supposed to evaluate and simplify i to the 55th power, okay? Now, the way the powers of i works is, well, let's just do it real fast. You have i to the 0 power, i to the 1st, i to the 2nd, i to the 3rd. Now, i to the 0 power is just 1, i to the first is i, i squared we know is negative 1, and i cubed is basically i times i squared, so negative 1 times i, which is negative i, okay? Then when you go to the i to the fourth, you just go back to 1 and it repeats, okay? So this pattern keeps repeating. So the way you attack a problem with the power of i is you want to know uh, any multiple of 4, okay? Because this, this pattern just keeps repeating. When we go to i to the 4th, it goes back to 1. i to the 5th, it goes back to i. So on and so forth, okay? But a big thing to note is i to the 4th is equal to 1, okay? So what you want to do is you want to divide 4 into 55. And let's see, how many times does 4 go into 55? Uh, 13 times, okay? So 13 times 4 is 52. So 52 is a power of 4. So the first thing that I want to do is rewrite this i to the 52 times i to the third. Okay? Now, what's happening here is this is uh, i to the 52, 4 goes into 52 evenly. 
okay, in fact, 13 times. So if you wanted to be fancy here, you could write i to the 4th raised to the 13th power, and that's the same as i to the 52nd, okay? But i to the 4th is just 1, guys, so this is 1 to the 13th power, which is just 1. All right, so I'm just telling you any i to any multiple of 4 is going to be 1, okay? So all that is just 1, and then you have i to the 3rd. And then when we, whatever's left over, this is when we come over to our chart. i to the 3rd is negative i. So I have 1 times negative i, and that's simply negative i, okay? So to handle these powers of i, divide it by 4, find the biggest num number of 4 that it goes into, and whatever's left over, in this case, i to the third is left over, take that to my chart, okay? And it's negative i. So your answer for 12 is negative i. Take a look at number 13 here. You have the square root of 5 minus the square root of 7, all quantities squared. Well, again, that's just a FOIL problem. So you're going to write this out twice and FOIL it out, okay? So this squared means this whole thing. So I have square root of 5 minus square root of 7 times square root of 5 minus square root of 7. Okay, another FOIL problem. So square root of 5 times square root of 5 is the square root of 25, and the square root of 25 is just 5. Minus this times this is a minus square root of 35. Minus another square root of 7 times 5 is another square root of 35. And then negative root 7 times negative root 7 is positive square root of 49, which is 7. Okay? 5 plus 7 we can add together is 12. Negative, again, you want to treat this like, um, like negative x and negative x. A negative x and a negative x is negative 2x. A negative 35, square root of 35, and a negative square root of 35 is negative 2 square root of 35. Okay? If there was a perfect square inside of 35, you would pull that out and reduce, but we don't have a perfect square inside of 35. So this is your answer, 12 minus 2 times the square root of 35. Okay, number 14 here, we have negative 1 divided by 8, all in quantity, raised to the negative 5 thirds power, okay? Now, let's handle this negative exponent first. Technically, a negative 1 over 8 to the negative 5 thirds, we bring this whole thing down and it's to the positive 5 thirds, but it, now it's 1 over negative 1 8 to the positive 5 thirds, okay? And that produces a complex fraction, which overall basically what happens is if you have a fraction to a negative exponent, what happens is that fraction just ends up getting flipped, and now you can write the exponent as positive, okay? So um, you could do the long way, put 1 over negative 1 over 8, but then you're going to multiply through by 8, and it's just going to come up to the top anyway, okay? So remember, if you have a fraction to a negative exponent, you can just flip that fraction, and now it's to a positive exponent. Okay, uh, we're going to raise it to the fifth power, but we're cube rooting it, okay? Divided by 3 means we're doing the cube root. So this is 8 to the 5 thirds divided by negative 1 to the 5 thirds, okay? So that means the cube root of 8, and the cube root of 8 is 2 raised to the fifth power. 2 to the fifth power, which is 32. And the bottom, the cube root of negative 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 raised to the fifth power is going to end up still being negative 1. So my final answer here is 32 over negative 1, which is a negative 32. Alright, number 15, we have x squared equals negative 12, and we're solving equations finally. So now we're solving equations. Well, we have a square root property when we're solving equations, and I can take the square root of both sides. But on this side, anytime you're doing the square root property, you have to do plus or minus, okay? So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. The square root of x squared is just x, and that's going to equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 12. All right? Now, the square root of negative 12, we want to simplify a little bit, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to break that down into plus or minus uh, 4. I'm going to break this down like this. 4 times 3 times negative 1, okay? So that's going to equal plus or minus the square root of 4 times the square root of 3 times the square root of negative 1, okay? 
Well, the good news is two of these we can simplify. Square root of 4 is just 2. The square root of negative 1 is i, so I have 2 times i. And the square root of 3 we can't simplify, so that's just left as square root of 3. Okay? So I have x equals plus or minus 2i times the square root of 3. Okay, number 16 here. We have the square root of a plus 2 minus the square root of a minus 3 equals 1. Again, it's an equation and we're solving for a, okay? Uh, what I'm going to choose to do, I can see ahead of time, I'm going to have to square both sides and then try to isolate the radical, okay? Um, so what I'm going to choose to do is I'm going to add this root a minus 3 over here. So that'll be my starting point. I have a plus 2 equals 1 plus the root of a minus 3 because I'm going to add this to this side. Okay, at this point, I'm going to square both sides. And when you square both sides, things with more than one term, you're going to have to FOIL it out, okay? The left side of the equation, the square root of a plus 2 squared, just comes out to a plus 2. But on the right side of the equation, again, I have to FOIL that out. So if it helps, instead of writing a 2 here, you can actually write it out the long way, since you're going to have to FOIL it out anyway, okay? So 1 times 1 is 1. 1 times root a minus 3 plus another 1 times root a minus 3 is 2 root a minus 3. And then root a minus 3 times root a minus 3 is just a minus 3. Okay, well, some good stuff happens, but I still have a square root here, okay? Now all of my attention is going to come to trying to isolate this square root, all right? So let's see here, I have a plus 2 on the left side. 1 plus 2 root a minus 3 plus a minus 3. Well, let's put that a out here in front. We have 1 and negative 3, which is negative 2, and plus 2 root a minus 3. Okay, so I'm going to subtract this a from both sides. I'm going to add this 2 to both sides. And now I'm left with, this is just 4, and this is 2 root a minus 3. Okay. Still trying to get that by itself. Let's divide both sides by 2. Now I have 2 equals root a minus 3. Okay. Now finally at this point, I'm going to square both sides. And anytime you square both sides of an equation, you introduce the potential for extraneous solutions. So I'm going to have to go back and check any answers that I get. When I square both sides, I'm kind of running out of room, so let me scoot over here. I get 4 equals... The square root squared is just equal to a minus 3, okay? So to solve this, I add 3 to both sides, and I get, finally, a is equal to 7. a equals 7. Okay, but again, I squared both sides multiple times here. I squared it in the beginning, and I squared both sides again here. So anytime I square both sides, I just have to check my answers to make sure they work okay. So I have to go back to the original equation and plug in 7 and make sure that answer works. So if I plug a 7 here, 7 plus 2 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. If I plug a 7 here, 7 minus 3 is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So I have 3 minus 2. Is that equal to 1? Well, yes, it does equal to 1. So my answer A equals 7 works. That is my solution to this problem. All right, number 17, again, luckily here on 17, the square root is already isolated, okay? So I'm at a good spot to go ahead and square both sides. But what's tricky here is p plus 2, when I square that, that's a FOIL. p plus 2 times p plus 2, got to FOIL it out, okay? So step one, square both sides. This side, you're just left with this. But on the right side, I have to square p plus 2, and that literally means p plus 2 times p plus 2, which I have to FOIL out. So you get p squared plus 4p and plus 4. Okay, well this is kind of good actually. I have p squared on both sides. If I subtract p squared from both sides, that goes away. Now I have 3p plus 7 and 4p plus 4. So let me subtract 3p from both sides. And let's subtract 4 from both sides. And if I handle all of this math here, you're going to get 3 on this side 
and you're going to get p on this side, and that's it. So you get p equals to 3. Now again, I squared both sides, so I have to go back to the original problem and check my answer because you have the potential that it might not work. So if I go back and I plug in p equals 3 here, 3 squared is 9 plus 3 times 3 is 9, so I have 9 plus 9, which is 18, plus 7. So my question is, is the square root of 25 equal to, and again, this is before I multiplied it out, p plus 2, 3 plus 2, 5. <coughs> Excuse me. Is the square root of 25 equal to 5? Yes, that works out. So my only answer here is p equals 3. Moving on to number 18 here. We have 3, x plus 1 to the 4th equals 3. All right. Well, the good news is I can divide both sides by 3 in the first step. And if I do that, I get x plus 1 to the 4th equals 1. OK? I'm going to solve this by using the square root property. Um, well, technically, the fourth root property. Because to undo the fourth power, I'm going to have to take the fourth root. So I'm going to take the fourth root of both sides, the fourth root, and I have to include plus or minus. The fourth root of x plus 1 to the fourth is simply x plus 1. The fourth root of 1 is just 1. But I have plus or minus there. So great, I have x plus 1 equals plus or minus 1. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, you have x equals negative 1 plus or minus 1. This is going to give me two potential answers. So one answer is negative 1 plus 1, which is 0. And the other answer is negative 1 minus 1, which is negative 2. Okay? I have to go back to the original equation and check both of these <coughs> Excuse me, to make sure that they work. Okay? So going back to the very, very original, before I divided both sides by 3, this is what the original problem looked like. Let's plug in 0. If I plug a 0 here, 3 times 1 to the 4th does equal 3. That works. Okay. Let me plug in a negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 gives me a negative 1, and a negative 1 to the 4th power does come back to positive 1, and 3 times 1 equals 3. Okay. So on this particular problem, both answers work when you check it out, and so we have x equals 0 and x equals negative 2 for answers. Okay, number 19, 2x minus 1 to the third power equals 27. Well, the good news is the power is isolated here. And the other good news is it's an odd number, 3. So when I take the cube root of both sides, I don't have to do plus or minus uh, on odd powers. So let's do the cube root of both sides. Uh, so I'm just going to be left with 2x minus 1 equals the cube root of 27, which is just 3. Okay. And then this is a relatively easy problem to add 1 to both sides. You get 2x equals 4. Divide both sides by 2, x equals 2. Okay? And on when you do the cube root of both sides, you don't have to check our answer. So, I mean, technically it's good to check anyway, but we uh, have just one, one solution, x equals 2. Okay, at number 20, we have the equation v equals 4 divided by 3 times pi times r to the third. And for the first part, we're asked to solve for r. So let's just do the first part. Um, what's happening to r right now? Well, it's being cubed, but also it's being multiplied by pi, being multiplied by 4, and divided by 3. Okay, so I want to try to get the r to the third by itself first. So I need to undo what's happening to it. Okay, so on the right side, I'm just going to have r to the third. I'm going to divide by pi, divide by 4, and multiply by 3. Let's do all of that in one step. So I have a v over here. I'm multiplying both sides by 3. I'm dividing both sides by 4. And I'm also dividing both sides by pi. Okay? So that would be my first step for this problem. Now I'm going to take the cube root of both sides. The cube root of r to the third is just r, which is what I want. So r equals the cube root of 3 times v divided by 4 times pi. Okay? And that's it for the first part. Okay, on the second part here, we already solved for r. You have the cube root of 3v four divided by 4 pi. And on the second part, it says find r 
if v if d equals 50 cubic feet. So I'm going to let v equal 50, okay? So, and then I'm, I'm probably going to have to go to my calculator to simplify this, but I have 3 times 50 divided by 4 times pi, and then I'm going to take the cube root of that. So, let's go to our calculator here and see. We have 150 divided by 4 pi. And that comes out to about 11.93 something. And then it's the cube root of that. So that comes out to approximately, I'm going to go four decimal places, 2.2854. So R is approximately 2.2854. Okay, that's it. Okay, on number 21, we have a system of equations word problem. Tickets for a football game cost $8 and $12. Okay, so let's let X be the number of $8 tickets. And let's let Y be the number of $12 tickets. Okay? So 480 tickets were sold. So that gives us our first equation x plus y equals 480. And our second equation says the total comes out to $4,620. Okay, So if I have $8 for each um, of the x tickets sold plus 12 for each of the y tickets sold, that comes out to $4,620. <clears throat> And that gives me my equations, okay? Um, you can do this addition elimination or you can do substitution. <clears throat> Either one. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and do addition elimination. So I'm going to multiply this top equation by negative 8. <clears throat> Let's see what we get here. So and I'll, I'll just put it right here. We'll get negative 8x plus negative 8y equals, and 480 times negative 8 is negative 3840. Alright, let's add straight down the columns. This zeroes out. This gives me 4y equals 4620 minus 3840, 780. And so if I divide both sides by 4, then y equals 195. So that's saying we sold 195 of the $12 tickets, okay? And my very first equation says x plus y had equal 480, which is how many tickets we sold. So let's figure out what x has to be. x plus 195 is equal to 480. And then, of course, x will just be 480 minus 195. And so x equals 285, okay? So be very clear, we have 285 of the $8 tickets that were sold and 195 of the $12 tickets that were sold. And that's it. All right, we're finally on number 22, the last problem here. And of course it's a tough one, so let's read through here. Let's let X be the amount invested at 5%. So this is the money at 5%. And then similarly, let's let y be the amount of money invested at 8%. And then z, the amount of money invested at 12%. Okay, so we have a system of three equations and three unknowns here. Well, the first equation is easy. It says the total amount invested is 3,000. So equation number one is going to be x plus y plus z equals 3,000. That's going to be my first equation, okay? The second equation, the total interest earned after one year is 285. Okay, that one's a little bit difficult. Uh, so how much money we make at x dollars is 5%, okay? So my second equation is 0 0.05 times x plus 0 0.08 times y, plus 0 0.12 times z, that total earnings came out to $285, all right? 
So it's the interest times the amount invested. Okay? Then finally, the third equation says the amount invested at 12%, so Z is triple the amount invested at 5%. So Z is 3 times X. Okay. So there we have it. Those are my three equations that I need to work with. Okay. So, um, well, luckily this last equation, it only has X and Z in it. Okay. So one thing I can do is I can work with the two equations up here and let's get rid of Y in those equations. All right. Now, one thing that I, I really can't stand, it's already bad enough that we have to deal with these huge numbers and, um, three equations, three unknowns. We don't want to have to deal with these decimals. Okay. So what I'm going to ask you guys to do is multiply this whole second row by 100, and that will get rid of these decimals, all right? So let's do that. So I'm going to leave the first equation alone, x plus y plus z equals 3,000. The second equation, I implore you, multiply through by 100, and that'll leave just 5x plus 8y plus 12z equals 28500. And then my last equation, if you want to put it in standard form, you have 3x minus z equals 0. So this is my system of equations, okay? All right, and as I mentioned before, this one's pretty easy to deal with because it only has x and z. y is gone, okay? So I'm going to put that guy to the side over here. Let's erase some of this. And let's just put that second or that third equation over to the side. We have 3x minus z equals 0. Okay, it doesn't have a y. So let's use the first two equations in such a way to get rid of y. That's my goal. And I can do that by multiplying the top by negative 8. And that way when I add it to the positive 8, the y's will go away. Okay, so I'm going to multiply the top equation by negative 8. So I get negative 8x plus negative 8y plus negative 8z equals 3,000 times negative 8, which is negative 24,000. Then I have 5x plus 8y plus 12z equals 28,500. Sorry, I'm running a little bit short on room there. Now I'm going to add straight down here, and I'll get negative 3x. My y's drop out plus positive 4z equals, and let's do this in the calculator so I don't mess it up, 28,500 minus 24, and comes out to 4,500. Okay, so I've created my equation with just x and z, and now I can pair it with this equation with just x and z. So let's bring that guy down here. 3x minus z equals 0. And this is kind of, it works out perfect because the x's are ready to go. So I'm just going to draw a line and I'm going to add straight down. That goes away. This is 3z. This is 4,500. Divide both sides by 3. And I will get my first amount. So 4,500 divided by 3 is 1,500. So that's $1,500 at... Uh, 12%. Okay? Now, once I have z, I can get x because I can just go back to this equation or this one right here. If z is 1500, then let's see what x has to be. So let's come over to the side. 3 times x minus 1500 equals 0. So add 1500 to the other side. We get 3x equals 1500. And dividing by 3, you get x equals 500. So X was my amount at 8%, right? So $500 at 8% interest. Okay? Then I'll just go back to the original first equation. I have X is 500, I have Z is 1500, and then I can figure out what Y has to be. All right? See if I can just kind of sneak that in over here. 500 plus Y plus Z is 1500 equals 3000. Okay? So, well, 
Take 500 plus 1500 is 2000, and I'm going to subtract that. So y is going to come out to be $1,000. And that was at, uh, oh, I'm sorry, this was 5%. Whoops. And this was at 8%. Okay. So just be very clear on your final answers. We have $500 at 5% interest. We have $1,000 at 8% interest, and we have $1,500 at 12% interest, okay? So X, comma, Y, comma, Z. And that's it, okay?